Hey everybody, hope you're doing well. I figured we'd talk uh, today a little bit about yesterday's reading. I'll give you a little bit more info about how testing for uh, COVID-19 works. Um, <clears throat> so I asked my wife, she's in the medical kind of field, how they were doing it. This was a few months ago. She didn't really know. And then I kind of took a step back and thought a little bit. Um, and I was like, I bet they're doing it. I bet they're just testing for the DNA of the virus, which would mean they have to take a sample from someone and do PCR. So I wanted to talk a little about PCR. They talk about it in this reading. Um, definitely when you get down a little bit further after they talk about where they found this bacteria that can handle really, really high temperatures. It's a type of archibacteria that can live in boiling water. Um, so it talks about this right here in like extreme hydrothermal pools and they resist extreme temperatures. So hot in which, you know, that that's even boiling. Um, and then they go into copying the DNA part. Now PCR um, works by heating. Well, so you take a DNA sample and it could be a swab from your mouth. It could be whatever, a hair. Um, it doesn't really matter, but as long as you get some DNA, what we do with it then is we put it in a little tube with um, other DNA components. And so that would be one thing's called a primer and that like just sticks to the DNA and it's a start code. It just says start reading here. Okay. Um, we also put it in a little, little jar with um, nucleotides. So just a mixture of, um, you know, A's, T's, G's, and C's. And then we also put it in there with an enzyme called DNA polymerase. And once we have all those components, we can replicate the DNA strand. So you might only have one piece of DNA in there, um, but when the primer sticks to it, um, what we're gonna do is replicate it and copy it and make thousands if not millions of copies depending on how long you do PCR. So, um, this, I was watching the news this morning, um, early this morning, and the governor and the state of Minnesota is kind of complaining about not having enough testing supplies. They have enough testing supplies to test about 600 more patients for COVID-19. And what it really comes down to is these um, critical chemicals that are used in doing PCR. So can they get enough of the, um, the reagents um, which includes the, the nucleotides, the A, T's, G's, and C's, in order for them to actually do um, this genetic test. So that's kind of an issue. Um, but let's get back to what this um, article was telling you. So in order to do PCR, in order to replicate DNA, what we do is we take a DNA strand that's like stuck together. You know, you got like one half and the other half, and there's letters in between. And we heat it up so much that it breaks the bonds and the strand goes and it peels apart. And once the strand is like peeled apart, you can look at the letters inside, right? And when you can look at the letters, you can read them. So what we need to do is heat it up really high, got a lot of heat and it just, the molecule comes apart. And this is why heat can kill things like bacteria and can destroy things like viruses, okay? And then what we do is remember that this is sitting, this DNA is sitting in a mixture with a primer and that primer is floating around in the liquid and it, you know what, oh, it sticks to an area of DNA that we want to replicate. And we know what DNA we want to replicate because we've engineered the primer to be a complement to that, to stick to it, to, to have the, the complementary base pairs. If it sees A on this side, it's gonna have a T on this side and it's gonna to stick to it, right? A to T, G to C, this goes back like a month ago two months ago. So um, the primer sticks and then we need an enzyme and we're calling it DNA polymerase to then stick to that primer and then start reading the strand and copying that DNA strand. Copy, 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 copy. Okay. Here's the thing. It needs to have the strand open. And in order to do that, we need it at a really high temperature. So DNA polymerase needs to copy that strand at a really high temperature. And that was the problem. Most things die, most things come apart. The DNA itself even comes apart at a high temperature. So that's the amazing thing about this bacteria you were reading about yesterday. It's so amazing is that it lives at those really, really high temperatures normally. 
And so its enzyme works at those really, really high temperatures normally. So when we put it in our vial with our DNA sample and we heat that sample up, the DNA is falling apart. But you know what? That enzyme works there normally. It's happy there and it starts reading the DNA and it makes another copy of it. And then we cool it down, right? And we cool it down. And then the multiple DNA strands uh, that have been made can kind of like come back together or sorry, the ones that have split have come back together when we cool it down. And we have this strand of RNA that we made or DNA that we made on both sides and they can be removed. Um, when that happens and cools, when, when you cool it down, it's called annealing and the DNA strands just come back together. Okay, it's that simple. Um, but you'll have two of them, right? So again, like you get, pull them apart, one gets copied and it's kind of floating next to it and then you just cool it down and it comes back together. Okay, but you got another one doing that over here too. So now we've made two in a few minutes and then all that we as scientists have to do is seriously put it in a little like incubator that warms up for like 20 minutes and then cools down again and then it warms up and then it cools down and then it warms up and it cools down and every time it warms up and cools down we make double the copies of DNA so you can have one piece of DNA stick it into um, you know basically an autoclave and and let it heat up and cool down and or an auto cycler and um, come back the next day and you would have thousands or hundreds of thousands of copies of that DNA so much that you can actually like see it in the vial like a ton of it and then we can like suck it out and do another test and it actually shows us what letters we have okay but um, this microbe was super important in allowing us to do that and all we have to do is heat it up and cool it down and it really has to do with like heating it up really hot so that it denatures and bacteria have allowed us to, to replicate DNA. And this is used in every genetic test, like every one of them, sorry, like everything. So um, a little tiny bacteria found in Yellowstone like half a century ago, pretty much now, we're talking about the 1960s and 70s here, um, is allowing us to do all of the DNA tests and all of these COVID-19 tests that we're doing today. The cool thing about it is no one really cared about it at the time. They're like, mm, we're not really studying. It's not really important. It's just a little microbe, like who cares? But it's super important for us. And so that's why I had those questions on the forum from yesterday. So thanks for reading that. Hopefully you found it kind of interesting. Um, let's get into today's stuff in another video.